Case, case, cluster, cluster, boom. We're at the boom stage, folks. Hello, this is Chris Martinson with your daily SARS-CoV-2, a.k.a. the Honey Badger virus update here for March 20th, 2020. We got a lot of 20s up there, 20, 20, 20. And it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon right now. This one's going to be a little short. It's sort of a half day for me, but uh, you're going to be treated to uh, a second half with Adam Taggart, my co-partner at Peak Prosperity, and he's going to be taking us and taking you through the Home Lockdown Survival Guide. So first, the numbers. Let's look at what we got going on here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, This is just sad beyond belief. 627 new dead in Italy. China's numbers, not believable at all at this point in time. I've got, uh, I've seen videos of people lining up around single hospitals to get checked out for fevers and things like that. This is, every day they have 33, 39, today, 34. Yeah, no, not happening. Um, So Italy here is uh, really just suffering badly with this, and it's just taking such an enormous toll. Really, really sad, sad videos of overwhelmed hospitals, all of which should serve as a warning to every other country that this is what's coming if you do not take it seriously, if you do not self-isolate, if you do not uh, find a way to flatten the curve, all right? Spain, of course, uh, self-inflicted, uh, very bad what's going on here in Spain. And, of course, this um, uh, we covered that yesterday where Spain, Spanish authorities had worked to uh, preserve their uh, festival and uh, they wanted Valencia to have uh, plenty of tourists. So they got that. And now they have thousands and thousands of cases showing up. Germany as well, uh, really, really vaulting here. And again, very, very few deaths. And uh, I don't have a great explanation. Some people have sent me some things around that, suggesting maybe it's better health care. Maybe it's that Germany is spending more on antivirals. Maybe it's uh, some other factors we don't know about yet. But um, this is really unbelievable to have only two people in serious critical condition, excuse me, with 19,000 active cases. That's just, I don't know what's going on there. Um, Iran, many, many, many more cases than this, of course. And the United States now leaping uh, right up the the charts here with 3,000 new cases. And again, this is stunted by a severe lack of testing. France, Coming up strong here as well with uh, 1,600 new cases. Remember, I told you we'd start seeing four digits entirely in this row. After I told you we would start seeing three digits entirely in this row. And guess what? Next, we're going to start seeing five digits showing up in this row because these are horrifying numbers. And there's an immense amount of human tragedy written into the numbers this large. But we're not even remotely to the actual height of this whole pandemic yet. That is still to come. South Korea, showing how you lead the way, though. I do believe their numbers. They have a lot of testing, very active testing, very active uh, case tracing and treatments and things like that. Switzerland, though, a little bit head in the sand. Uh, They'll find out that they're going to pay for that. UK, same thing, going to pay. A lot of these European countries really slow uh, to get on the curve here. Many of them worried about things like... um, appearing racist, uh, not wanting to hurt people's feelings. We have some of that going on as well in uh, the United States still, where, you know, they call it patient privacy. We have absolutely a complete lack of information here. I can tell you that I've been in contact with people who work in local hospital systems telling me that there are many more cases that are here in my area that they know about, but they're not allowed to talk about. So with that lack of information, of course, you have to just assume everybody is sick. And so today... I was out, had to open some bank accounts uh, to, to for a transaction that I've got coming up, and I was the only person uh, in that bank who was wearing uh, any sort of PPE. But I got to tell you, you gotta if you're in that situation, you've, you've got to just take the social awkwardness of that. And I felt bad uh, for people who are in that situation of being in a workplace who are discouraged from or no or do not yet feel empowered to wear personal protective equipment. All right. Great concern, though, that Malaysia is coming on uh, with a lot of cases. Portugal as well, a slightly warmer country there is, uh, you know, in uh, poor Portugal, uh, knowing the the state of things there uh, to see them um, getting so many cases at this point. This is a real beast of a disease. And so what we're starting to see, of course, as expected, uh, countries are starting to break out their military, and the United States, I think, has uh, just joined that fray as well, largely because they're having trouble convincing their population not to go out and hang out next to each other and talk to each other close and do all the things that are spreading this disease. So that's happening. Now, here we are, case, case, cluster, cluster, boom. 
Look at this uh, to go from where it sort of hit the first hundred cases outside, you know, across the world. Um, uh, where uh, this is uh, actual total world data, but look, it took a month and a half to get to the first hundred thousand cases, and then we added another hundred thousand cases in twelve more days, and now we've uh, we've eclipsed. Um, we're adding this uh, next uh, chunk of cases here. This next fifty thousand cases is just forty eight hours, right? It's just it's just astonishing how quick that's going. So we're just adding tons and tons and tons of cases here, um, and of course that's the that's what happens when you have the whoosh phase. We're in that phase right now. All right, here are some reactions. Let's look at some of them. Uh, Taiwan. I'm kind of developing a little bit of a man crush on Taiwan here because look at them go. While most governments are asking people to stop panic buying, Taiwan's premier is taking a different approach. Buy as much as possible. There's plenty of goods. As the economy is slowing down, of course, the government encourages everyone to enthusiastically buy. That's a good approach right there. And if you're worried about your stores being you know, totally decimated, then do what I've seen lots of stores doing, which is limit the items to per, per person or whatever your limits are. Um, I've seen things in stores where they're starting to put uh, social distancing cues, like those little um, those, those feet outlines that you would stand at in the airport before it's your turn to go through the, the millimeter wave scanner machine uh, on security. They're putting those sort of things on the ground now to tell give show people what six to eight feet might look like between people so spreading the lines out i like seeing that good stuff saudi arabia shuts down public transportation including passenger flights wow that's pretty serious right there and of course again this is pretty much a warm uh country with with relatively low humidity so mm, I, I think the summer theory is gone out the window at this point in time governor newsom of california issues statewide stay-at-home order but says it won't be enforced by police so Eh, doesn't really count. Um, not really going to do much there, I don't think. Los Angeles issues stay-at-home order due to coronavirus telling citizens to limit non-essential movements. Again, you can ask, but I think it's still you, till you start telling uh, this may not work out quite like you hope. Um, as of midnight, everyone in Argentina will be required to stay at home with only a few exceptions, for example, to buy groceries. The measure will last until March 31st. That's 11 days from now. That's closer to how you do it. Um, you're gonna, if you want to have people stay at home, you kind of have to enforce it. These suggestions, you know, we think about suggestions. I don't think those are going to really work. So let's look at more reactions. This is should be really eye-opening to people to tell you where we are. This comes out uh, this morning at 6 o'clock, March 20th. U.S. power industry may ask key employees to live at work if coronavirus worsens. No if about this. Coronavirus is going to worsen. The peak for this we're expecting May, June, somewhere in that zone. Um, probably about the middle of June is what my current models say. But listen, that could bump either direction for a whole wide variety of reasons. Here we see that the U.S. electric industry may ask essential staff to live on site at power plants and control centers to keep operations running if when the coronavirus outbreak worsens and has been stockpiling beds, blankets, and food for them according to industry trade groups and electric cooperatives. And of course, it's vital that we keep certain things like electricity running. It's vital that we keep uh, fuel flowing, things like that. Absolutely vital, particularly as we come into the uh, growing season and farmers are going to, uh, of course, need uh, plenty of materials, fertilizer, seed, all kinds of things that uh, we have to get them. But I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen with vegetables and other high human labor inputs uh, that are going to be difficult to do if migrant workers are no longer migrating or other things that could really inhibit the number of people out in the field. So I'm going to reiterate my call here that you should be starting a garden at this point in time, if you can. Um, and if you can't, find somebody who maybe can share some of their land if, if you know somebody with a plot. But uh, having fresh vegetables going into uh, next this summer and fall is going to be critical, I think, for our health and for our sanity. Uh, more reactions. The Illinois governor, J.B. Pritzker, plans to issue a shelter-in-place order for the entire state of Illinois, according to the Chicago Tribune. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has ordered the closure of bars, clubs, restaurants, leisure centers, theaters, and gyms. Hey, I, I guess they're, uh, let's just get to herd immunity quickly. Uh, uh, they've probably got some different numbers that say maybe that's not the best idea at this point in time. All right, uh, as well, turning now to FedEx Field in Maryland. Look at this. Uh, somebody sent this in uh, across my Twitter feed. And let me see if I can. There we go. So everyone, I am live right now. This is crazy. I'm at live right now. 
I mean, I'm live right now at FedEx Field. This is what's going on. They have the military setting up for this quarantine. They're not playing games. OMG. Yeah, OMG. So this young lady's having a, an adjustment reaction right now. It, it's shocking to see these sorts of things happening. But of course, when you're at the boom stage, it's always shocking. That last five minutes on the exponential function really does uh, catch a lot of people by surprise. Um, I've mentioned this before, but Time Magazine just came out with this article. And uh, this explains why I think the U.S. is screwed. Uh, that's a combination of two words. Doomed is one of them. And uh, th this is relating a single example of a woman whose uh, cost of a couple days of COVID treatment, $34,927.00. 43 cents. You got to enjoy that little dark humor that the hospitals have uh, coming up with such accurate numbers like that. So they recount that this woman, uh, she's already uh, on cancer treatment, so she isn't feeling well. She self-diagnoses, has all the appropriate symptoms, has to fight to go get tested, finally gets tested. And then um, a few days later, she got the bills for her testing and some treatment, 34927 and 43 cents. It was, I was pretty sticker shocked, she says. I personally don't know anybody who has that kind of money, um, how much does it cost to be hospitalized for COVID-19? This is where the United States, uh, they call it, because of our fragmented healthcare, I'll call it what it is. It's a shit show, right? It's absolutely awful how it, we treat each other in this. It's a predatory system. The amount of money that the healthcare CEOs are earning is disgusting. And the amount of money that the healthcare insurance company C-suite people take home is disgusting. And they've set up a system that's so complicated, it just wears people down at their sickest, most vulnerable moments in order to see how much money they can squeeze out of them. It's awful. Um, and so they say here, it kind of depends on what kind of insurance you have, what your plan's benefits are, and how much of your deductible you've already paid down, blah, 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 blah. I, I have, my healthcare plan comes with a book. Might as well be a phone book. It's like a half inch thick. And it's like, we cover this, but not that, except under these circumstances. But if then, you know, it's just all legal jumbo, jumbo, nothing to do with healthcare. It's just, it's about sick care profits. Awful. What if you're uninsured? Well, it's not pretty. Some hospitals offer charity programs. Some in some states are making moves to help residents pay for uh, honey badger costs beyond testing. Several states, including Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, New York, Rhode Island, and Washington, have created special enrollment periods to allow more people to sign up for insurance mid-year. Uh, so you could sign up for insurance, but what if you can't afford it? Well, tough. Um, so this is just really awful. And again, the reason the U.S. is screwed is that knowing, seeing a story like this come out, what do you think? Are people going to, when they have this uh, honey badger virus and they know they've got the right symptoms, are they going to go? Are they going to show up? Are they going to get treatment? No, they're going to delay it as long as possible because they don't want to be financially destroyed by going to the hospital. So they're going to not go. And then, of course, they're going to keep spreading this thing uh, all around. And, and so this is exactly what you would set up if you wanted a system that was going to really fail and fail spectacularly in every dimension. All right. <clears throat> We know that the upcoming job losses, I covered some of this yesterday, but they will be unlike anything the U.S. has ever seen. This is from today. Uh, the coronavirus crisis is likely to result in layoffs on a scale the U.S. has never seen before. So worst ever. Economists expect April to be the first reporting month when the damage starts to show up. Forecasts in that month range from 500,000 to 5 million. I'm going to guarantee you it's not 500,000. It's way more than that based on the data we saw yesterday with tens of thousands of people showing up in a two-day window in dozens of states. The worst month during the financial crisis saw non-farm payrolls decrease by 800,000. This is going to just blow that away uh, by a long shot. And we're just getting started, I think, too, unfortunately. Weekly jobless came, claims numbers are expected to be so bad, the White House has reportedly asked state officials to delay releasing precise counts. Oh, my God. Not again. This is how the United States rolls. If you don't like how the data is going to show up, just hide it and be non-transparent and pretend like like that's still, what is this? Is this grade school? Sticking our fingers in our ears and, and closing our eyes and nan nan nan. Just oh my God. Anyway, awful. So I've been asked recently. Uh, I was on a podcast yesterday with with Victor out of um, out of Ottawa, and he asked me uh, how long until this herd immunity? How long are we actually preparing for in this story? And the answer is, it's a good long time. So herd immunity, remember, I, this was from, we covered this in the March 9th vlog, my vlog that, that I covered. 
here and I put up this chart and it shows that with something with an R0 of between 4 and 7, which is what this honey badger virus has, you need somewhere between 75 and 86%. So let's call it 80%. We need to see around 80% of people infected. Well, how far away are we? Well, the current leader is Italy with 778 people infected out of every 1 million people they have. And that's a stunning 0.8%. So they are at 0.8%. We need that to get to 8%, then 80%, two orders of magnitude away from herd immunity. So we got a long way to go. How long? You know, unless a miracle uh, vaccine comes along that's safe, efficacious, and can be produced at scale and then delivered, best guess is 18 to 24 months. And I hate to deliver that news, but that's what you need to be mentally prepared for. Uh, some essential viewing, given that, given this, this is really uh, challenging right here, given that this, how to inform your loved ones, this uh, one right here, this one has the adjustment reaction in it. If you haven't watched that, you really need to watch that. Uh, fast forward a bit till you find that adjustment reaction, get past the daily numbers and look at that one. Otherwise, in prepare for a national lockdown, which was four days ago here, um, I put out a couple of these. I put out this piece right here, which I just want to step through very quickly. Uh, okay, given that, given, geez, it's a big, what am I preparing for? I don't even know. What do I do, right? Well, the first thing is you self-isolate right away. And you want, because you don't want to get this thing. Nobody does, right? And um, until we understand who can get it relatively safely, we don't know what the risk factors are. If you're young, you might think, oh, I could just get this. It's not a big deal. I've heard other people get it. It's not a big deal. For some, it is a big deal. We don't know why it's a big deal for some and not others. So it's still pretty dangerous. Even if you go by the gross statistics, one out of 500 people who's young let's say under the age of 30, they're going to die from this unless they're under the age of 10. They seem to be immune to this thing. But, you know, between the ages of 10 and 30, there's still a one in 500 chance of dying. But for some people, it's a lot higher. Of course, if you have an underlying condition, diabetes, obesity, uh, any cardiovascular stuff, autoimmune, Crohn's disease, things like that, right? So um, that if uh, the way you avoid this is you self-isolate and you do that both for yourself and for the people you don't want to get infected who you love. As well, you want to start a, a rigorous cleaning routine. This is supposed to mention, you know, signify here that um, not only do you want to keep your house clean, but you have to start practicing all new behaviors out in public, not touching your face, realizing that when you touch any public handle, whether that's a gas pump handle, it's a handle to a door, it's an escalator railing, anything public that you now have a contaminated hand, even if you have gloves on, especially if you have gloves on, right? You do not want to um, touch something public without then uh, decontaminating your hand before you do anything with it. As well, no big no big uh, gatherings. This is a well-managed gathering. This looks about right as long as um, I'm standing about here where the camera frame is. Uh, as well, you're going to want to stay at least six feet away from people, you know, a nice long distance. You don't want to be caught in this situation right here. Nobody's wearing PPE here. Um, and, you know, just keep a little more distance between people. That would be just a little better. Um, the more, the merrier. No more school, restaurants, bars, right? That's already being shut down. That decision's been taken away from you at most places. When I put this out four days ago, I had somebody write me the next day and say, My, the nation didn't shut down today. You know, you're wrong. No, I, I said it's coming. I, I'm early to these things. I like to give people as much warning as I can. So I knew this was coming and I knew it's coming within a week or two at most, but certainly within a week. But this has already happened in a lot of places. No longer is any of this stuff happening. We're going to see this curtailed next. This is pretty much uh, self-isolating. People are already not taking those, but those will be down. Uh, of course, don't go on a cruise. Um, and uh, you're just going to have to really uh, start doing all of these other things as, in terms of self-isolation. But now is the time to plant a garden. You got to get some stuff going because this is going to be one of your best sources of fresh vegetables. Okay. And uh, hey, let's. Uh, what's the positive here? We we can get to use this time, this quarantine time, those things that maybe you'd always meant to get to, but but hadn't. Hey, instead of wallowing around, drinking, numbing, uh, playing video games, and maybe watching a lot of Netflix, get up. Let, let's let's bust out and let's use this time to uh, learn to sing, to play the guitar, figure out a new riff, uh, clean the attic, whatever whatever that thing is you wanted to do. Uh, pick that up now. As well, uh, these are all our endorsed personal actions here. You know, it's getting a little bit past time to be able to prepare your household. You got to stay home. Uh, never go out if you're sick. Practice excellent personal hygiene. Make your home a green zone. So that's a, a place of refuge for you where you don't have to worry about uh, moving around your house and touching things and all that. It should be your place of freedom. 
And then this is where I'm starting to spool up here is really helping people in my neighborhood and my community. Lots of outreach, lots of phone calls, lots of plans, all of that. And remember, keep your health up. Get good rest. Vitamin C and D3 are part of my daily uh, ingestion right now. So I would advise that. Um, we, of course, we have all these endorsed national uh, actions, which uh, let, let's see, what are we doing here in the United States? Not really. Uh, nope, that's not happening. Nah, you're on your own there. Mm, they're talking about it, but I don't know. You know, maybe we'll get to it later. Uh, nah, nothing like that happening nationally. Maybe people will pick that up locally. Uh, nah, we wouldn't want to do anything like that. You know, we got rules. Uh, hey, they're talking about maybe doing this. Um, so we'll we'll see what comes we'll see what comes of this. Uh, it's delayed, but we'll see if they do any suspension of it. All right. Um, with all of that said, uh, remember this is not the flu. And uh, my conclusion for today is, hey, uh, it's coming. And uh, I'm pretty sure if I read the tea leaves correctly, we are only a day or two in my own state of Massachusetts from a lockdown. Lots of other places have uh, shelter in place right now. I think those are going to be firmed up from suggestions to actual uh, rules and guidance like that. So I'm going to turn this over to Adam Taggart now. And um, he wrote a really great piece, great piece on, uh, it's called The Home Lockdown Survival Guide. And it really collects a lot of our best information into a spot about how to go about surviving this lockdown period and all the things that and dimensions of things you need to think about. So with that, hey, uh, thank you everyone for listening today. Adam, take it away. Hi, folks. Adam Taggart from Peak Prosperity here. As Chris just mentioned, we just published on the site yesterday a comprehensive coronavirus home lockdown survival guide. Uh, we've been getting a huge amount of, of requests uh, over the past couple of days from uh, our viewers on YouTube, our readers at peakprosperity.com for uh, guidance like this now that we as a nation are all living under lockdown for the foreseeable future. Um, questions like, um, how do I make sure my house is stocked for success during a, a, a lockdown that may last for God knows how long? Um, how do I stay healthy? How do I stay sane? Uh, and how do I stay solvent? Uh, folks are watching, you know, the the um, uh, markets melting down. And this is while many people have already you know, perhaps lost their income streams or are spending time now, uh, wondering if uh, there might be a victim of a layoff uh, whenever these lockdowns uh, get lifted, um, given all the economic destruction that the coronavirus is doing. So um, uh, we have that uh, report published already on peakprosperity.com. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to go read it right now. Go to the front page of Peak Prosperity. You'll, you'll find it there. We'll place a link to it down in the uh, description of this video, too, so you can easily get to it. Uh, but then tomorrow, which is going to be Saturday, uh, that's going to be Chris's day off. We're going to try to give him a little chance to rest here. And uh, I will be going through uh, the entire guide uh, on video tomorrow here on the YouTube channel. So uh, if you don't get a chance to go uh, read the report now, uh, you can get the full walkthrough by me tomorrow. So um, whether we see it at the site now or see it at the site later or see it here later, I look forward to seeing